for today is found in the book of Luke, the 18th chapter. Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. He said, in a certain town there was a judge who neither, neither feared God nor cared for what people thought. But there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him with a plea, Grant me justice against my adversary. For some, for some time he refused her. But finally he said to himself, even though I don't fear God or care what people think, Yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice so that I won't eventually, she won't eventually come and attack me. The Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. Will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones who cry out to him by day and night? Will he, not, will he keep putting them off? I tell you, we will see that they get their justice and quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? Here is the lesson. Let us pray. We ask your blessing on us today as we open up this word to you. To us, uh, gathered here today, we ask you to inspire us uh, in our time of desperation and need, that we might carry on. For you ask us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Today's uh, lesson is a continuation of what we started last week. Remember, we spent a month or two, a couple of months, on a dinner where Jesus was having conflict with the Pharisees. And I was finally left that dinner, and we heard in last week's lesson how Jesus kind of making his way to Jerusalem, but it's not exactly a direct path, it's a winding path through Samaria and through Galilee and through all these towns. He's taking his ever sweet loving time and in the process teaching his disciples as he goes along the way. Now what I find really interesting in our lesson for today, and in our lectionary I should say, for those who know anything about the lectionary, the lectionary are the appointed lessons that we preach upon uh, on Sundays. And those are uh, appointed for us and so forth. But one of the things that's frustrating about the lectionary is that it leaves out some really fantastic scriptures that I think we should read in our, our church service. One of them is Luke 17, 20 to 37. I encourage you, it's in your handout for today. You're welcome to take out your handout. And by the way, this handout is online right now. So if you're watching online, you can take this handout out uh, online. You can download it, print it out, whatever you'd like to do. Or if you're watching on YouTube, you certainly can do the same. But um, look at Luke 17, 20 to 37 as part of your devotional this week. This story, why was it censored from our readings on Sunday mornings? And really it's because it makes people feel uncomfortable. I, I mean, think about that. How crazy is that? Isn't all of the scripture inspired by the word of God? Shouldn't all of it be read at some point in scripture? Shouldn't we, that be worthy of being studied? So I'm going to give you a little tidbit about, a little nugget that's free, by the way, on what this lesson was about because it leads into our lesson for today. In uh, that lesson, Jesus is responding to a Pharisee who comes to talk to Jesus about what is to come. Now, when I say a Pharisee, most people get that, yes, boo, Pharisees, evil. No, this is not an evil guy. This is actually, from the evidence of Scripture, a good guy. There were a lot of good Pharisees, by the way, that Jesus dealt with. The Pharisees that, dealt, that Jesus dealt with at the dinner were evil and bad and against God. The Pharisees that Jesus dealt with when he was crucified, they were not nice people either. This Pharisee was a good guy. How do we know? Because he's not giving Jesus a difficult time. He's not being confrontational. He wants to ask Jesus a legitimate question and Jesus takes this question very seriously. And what Jesus says to the man, this Pharisee, he indicates that life is going to, by the way, be filled with desolation, abandonment, hopelessness. Aren't you feeling so good right now? Maybe you know why it was left out of the lesson. Have you ever felt that way? Have you ever felt like you've been on your back, flat on your back, and say, I can't get any lower, and then for some reason, somehow, somebody lowers the floor even lower on you? Has that ever happened to you? Yeah, I'm seeing them some nods of heads. You just feel like everything has been ripped and it's still you keep losing and losing. What Jesus says, here's the hope. There's always grace in these moments. In that very moment, when you feel like everything has been ripped from you, when your back is on the floor, you've got nowhere else you can go but up. You know, there's no further down you can go. It is in that very moment out of your greatest despair that Jesus will be revealed. That's what Jesus says. Isn't that a hopeful lesson? We all struggle with abandonment. We all struggle with feelings of being desolated and hopeless. You are not alone. Every man, woman, and child on this planet goes through a time of great despair. Those people who even seem like they have all their ducks in a row and 
uh, just live the gilded life and so forth, even they have their time to struggle and despair. So what Jesus is saying in this lesson that was censored again is that Jesus is the one who brings order out of chaos, meaning out of desolation, peace out of hopelessness. I find that a very worthy lesson. Now that sets up our lesson for today. Because in today's lesson, it takes place that Jesus, after he says this to the Pharisee, takes his disciples off and continues teaching about that. He wants to let them know, you're going to be hopeless, helpless, feeling desolate, everything is going to be ripped from you. Now what was Jesus referring to? His crucifixion. They thought Jesus was going to be with them forever. Jesus knows he's only going to be with them a short time longer. He's going to be killed. He's concerned that they are going to be ripped asunder by his death. So Jesus takes the disciples away in a place where there's no other distractions and tells them another story about how they are called to hold on to hope when everything seems to be helpless, hopeless, and when things they seem to be filled with despair. So he tells a story about a woman who keeps going to the judge asking for justice day after day after day after day. Now, there are two key characters in our lesson for today, this parable. The one, obviously, is the woman. I really think she's the key. The story tells us about a woman who, for some reason, has not been receiving justice, has been going to this judge day after day after day, and the woman, amidst all of the chaos of her life, amidst all the despair, never gives up, never surrenders, never waves a red flag. You know, it reminds me of a couple of just short little snippets. You remember, I, I don't know if this, I guess this was this guy's name. I don't know what his real name was or his first name was. The Colonel Sanders, you know, Kentucky Fried Chicken. We all know Kentucky Fried Chicken. What you may not be aware of about his life is how he persevered when everybody laughed in his face. When he was trying to start up a fast food chicken restaurant, where people could buy food and be in and be out and feed their family for relatively inexpensive uh, price, he was laughed at a thousand times by people who went to go, he went to go to banks to get funding to be able to make this dream happen of his. Everybody laughed at him, turned him down. They said, this is the dumbest idea we've ever heard. What do you think those bankers think now? Gosh, I wish I'd given him money, right? He was successful because he persevered. Not the only example of that. How about Thomas Edison? Are you aware that Thomas Edison failed 10,000 times before he finally got the light bulb right? Every single time he failed with the light bulb, his, his comment was, well, that's one more thing I learned about what not to do next time. That's, that's, that's what he learned. So he said, I failed. Okay, I failed. I learned something. I learned what not to do next time. I'll do it better the next time until I finally get it right. How many of you would fail 10,000 times before you would succeed in something? Are you willing to push through that many times for something you believe in? Thomas Edison was. We have light. Thank you, Thomas. That's not all. Oh, how about this? How about this one? Um, this one you might know. There was a certain movie. I think it was 1978. 77, became uh, uh, Film of the Year, okay, Academy Award, Film of the Year, and so forth. What you may not, what you may not, uh, may, might not, Star Wars, and so that's why I can't remember the date. It might have been 76, I think it might have been 76, but there was a guy, a little-known actor, who actually was very, very unknown. He was trying to push for a movie that he thought would be a great story. Nobody would fund this. He went to every single major studio and every minor studio he could find. Nobody was willing to do it. He went again and a third time. He got to the point where he had $600 left in his bank account. He didn't know how he was going to pay his rent, pay his food, and take care of his family the next month. Then finally somebody said, all right, we'll make this stupid movie up for you. They gave him a very tiny budget. He got the movie made, and it became an Academy Award winning movie. You know what I'm talking about? I'm talking about Sylvester Stallone and Rocky. Hmm. There you go. What a great movie. But a movie is about a guy who persevered, and it's by a guy and made by a guy who was at the end of his rope, but just kept pushing and pushing and pushing until he got exactly what he felt he wanted. 
Why can't we Christians do that, right? Some Christians face opposition, and they're like, well, I guess God is telling me no. That's, that's bull. I always take it just the opposite. When I'm facing opposition, and I feel like I'm getting smacked down, that's not a no from God. That means that Satan's trying to get a hold of me, and I must be going in the right direction. I take opposition to mean just the opposite of what a lot of Christians do. So this is the story that Jesus tells about the woman who just never, ever gave up. And he's encouraging his disciples, if you go to that next page, that when the passion of Christ comes, he doesn't want that to destroy everything that Jesus has built. He wants the disciples to know that they might be tempted to abandon their faith, but Jesus is encouraging them to be persistent. Actually, true story. We had a member of this church, this was probably 15, 20 years ago. He was a non-Christian. He, he was never grew up in the church, never baptized. His uh, wife wanted to go to church. They kind of said, oh, this kind of fits. They liked it here. She liked it here. So he started coming. He came for a short time, was baptized. Maybe about four months later, he was baptized. So he did his baptism. And he said all of a sudden his life started falling apart. I mean, it got really, really, really bad where uh, he just said it was one thing after another, after another, after another. It was like a year, a year and a half of this, and he just said, he finally got to the point where he didn't show up on Sunday, and I was starting to get a little nervous. You know, a week or two went by, okay, fine, I finally called him up, and he said, well, I'm never going back again. I said, what do you mean you're never going back? He said, well, because I just decided if, uh, if this is the type of, if this is the type of evil that attacks me because they became a Christian, I don't need this Jesus in my life. And so he gave it all up. And I said, well, what's happened? He said, well, since I've given up Jesus, my life has become very peaceful. I don't need this Jesus. And I'm like, isn't that just the opposite of what it should be? The problem is, Satan did and was attacking him, trying to get him off his game and trying to let him know, hey, I just want you to give this up. So sometimes you're going to be attacked, it's going to be brutal, it's going to be hard, but you cannot give up. You cannot give up. Eventually Satan quits. You want to know why? Because he doesn't have endless resources, unlike God. And God promises to sustain us. Let's go on. So we have this woman. She doesn't give up. She persists no matter the persecution. He's encouraging his disciples to do the same when the worst thing in the world they can imagine is going to happen when Jesus is crucified. But we also have the second character in the story, the judge. Now, one of the things we have to be careful is realize that this judge is not a glimpse into the character of God. He is not a reflection of God. It's not intended to portray God as an uncaring, detached, and oblivious uh, God. Although there may be times when you feel that way. Have you ever felt that about God? I have. But what the judge does, the judge serves as a contrast to God not a prototype of God. And what it shows us is that even an unjust God will do the right thing when enough pressure is put on him. He's like a politician. You, you, you pander him with enough money or put enough pressure on him, they'll do whatever you ask. You know, that's why you can find every politician uh, disagreeing with one thing they said just a week ago because, well, it depends on where the pressure is coming from today, right? That's what he is. The implication, again, is that even an unjust judge can do the right thing on occasion. God, the righteous judge, will certainly be there to take care of you and the ones whom he loves. So this is what I learned from this lesson for today. The road ahead in your life is going to be difficult. If it's not difficult now, it will be in the future. Guess what you should do when you're, that road ahead becomes really difficult? Don't give up, right? That's not what you're thinking. Uh, when the days become darkest and gloomiest, when you feel like all hope has been snuffed from the room, guess what? Don't give up. When you feel as though you've been abandoned, don't give up. When the world seems to be against you, it very well may be against you. Don't give up. Because God, the one who brings order out of chaos and life from death, promises to have everything under his control and will guide you through. I got a, a wonderful illustration for you that you're going to watch. It's another video with a beautiful song. It's actually a beautiful Christian song. And uh, it's about a guy 
named Derek Redmond. Does anybody know the name Derek Redmond? Yes. Who is he? I don't remember. Okay, well, I'll tell you who he is. He was a 400-meter runner representing Great Britain in 1992. I could not tell you right now, if you were to ask me who won the gold medal in the 400, uh, 400 meters in the uh, Olympics in 1992, I have a clue. I don't remember the gold. I don't remember who won the silver. I don't remember who won the bronze. I remember Derek Redmond. And you're going to find out just why in just a moment. Because this man is an inspiration. His story is so cool. And so I want you to end with this. When things seem to be, when the rug seems to be ripped out from underneath of you, when things seem to be at your worst, I want this to be an illustration for you of what perseverance means. Pretty cool story. Now you'll remember Derek Redman. But more importantly, you'll remember that. <laughs> <I> just... <laughs> You'll remember his dad, because what a loving dad that is. You've got a loving daddy that loves you in heaven and is not going to let you fail. God is going to walk with you through this race of life, and you might pull your muscle, figuratively speaking. You might fail in so many different ways, but God is there to pick you up in your time of need. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, um, your disciples were threatened with being ripped asunder by what was about to happen in the crucifixion. And it nearly did rip them to pieces. But you were there to pick them up in their time of need. And we just pray that you, our Heavenly Father, would be there to pick us up. For the many people right here, right now, maybe many people watching at home, who just feel like their backs are against, pressed against the floor and they just don't feel like they can go any lower right now. So I'm praying that you would be that loving Father who fights his way out of the stands and through security and picks them up, wraps your arms around them. We just pray for that tenderness and kindness and your mercy to be upon us this day. For it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And now receive the Lord's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you in favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.